so bored. Darling, I'd love to, but it's family night. I'm out with my sister, the family lawyer, and there's always Juliet. Oh, oh I've had so much confetti thrown at me, I feel like I've flown the Atlantic. <laughs> Mass exhibitionism, Juliet. An oh. escape for the mob. There's Larry. Where is it? That's no way to take in the Mardi Gras. Yes, I know, but I... Uh... Say not. Oh, well, I'm in an awful hurry. I've got to run for it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Bad night to be in a hurry. Yeah. You use a bodyguard, special race for the bodyguard? Well, by the looks of it, I could do with a whole riot squad. <laughs> oh, can't you get me out of this? I'm in an awful hurry. We'll go around the end. the girl fell into your arms from out of nowhere. I? I'd look for marks of identification and ship her back to her nearest relatives. Yes, of course, you would. Yes, I would.
Well, I've been to a circus since I was in short pants. What? What was that? Well, nothing. I just said I hadn't been to a circus since I was in short pants. Oh. <laughs> What's funny about that? Oh, nothing. Just picturing you in short pants. <laughs> Raise a 40 cents to pretend it's been a dollar 98. I didn't know you needed money. Why didn't you ask me? Well, I didn't realize it. Stop this fooling. You've got my ticket. I think that chap was trying to rip me. Oh, no, Henry. Yes, yes. I had an experience once before with one of those boys in New York, yes. Oh, yes. really? Only he was very clever, yeah. At the oh. end of the performance, he made an American flag come right out of my hat. <laughs> Not really. In New York, yes. <laughs> these Mardi Gras. You can't tell the actors from the customers. Half 
kissed her. You kissed her? Yes. You never dance better. Oh, thanks. There's something in the air. <laughs> What's the matter, Larry? Oh, nothing. I just have a bit of a headache. I'm going to get something for it. Want me to come along? No, thanks. It's just one of those sudden attacks. Oh, one of those. Then maybe I'd better go along. Poor Henry. I think you had one too many. What's the matter with you? You've been crazy. Oh, I don't know his name, Muggins, but he certainly knows how to kiss. So do you sell them. Now, Larry, you know perfectly well you can't get aspirin in a flower shop. No. Those roses. Oh, they're just in fresh. We call them climbing Herbert Hoover. And you can't send roses. They mean... I'll take the last. Oh, yes, sir. There are four dozen. I object. Objection overruled. Four dozen climbing Herbert Hoover. That is practically inviting a breach of promise suit. I wonder if I'll ever see him again. What are you talking about? Perkins, it happened just like that. I'll take you about it off for the show. Well, you'd better. Now, look, Henry. You've done your duty by Aunt Barbara. Now, you'd run along and play. Four dozen climbing Herbert Hoovers. Would you deliver this to me? Miss Sonny? Yeah. How did you know? Well, if it weren't for Miss Sonny, we'd be selling peanuts around here. <laughs> oh. My friend Hector here does the most remarkable trick Extraordinaire. It's French. He thinks he dunks with the whistles, he juggles, and draws the new map of Europe with his tail all at the same time. Which for tonight only we will get. <coughs> no, 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 Hector. I insist. I insist. I insist. Come right back up here. Oh, yes. How's the headache, dear? I'll be all right as soon as the aspirin begins to work. <laughs> Supper in her private tent with an elephant pouring champagne? Might be exciting at that. Yes, for Jaded Palace.
Allegra. You're going to stick to the rain. You can postpone your little headache until tomorrow night. She'll still be here. Let's go, shall we? Oh, Larry, you're so restless tonight. Yes, it must be something in the air. Let me have my coat, will you, Henry? Muggins, it's out front. I can hardly believe my eyes. I wonder if you'll come back. I suppose that's his idea of a nice apology. He has nothing to apologize about. I asked him to kiss me. You did what? I asked him to kiss me. Climbing Herbert Hoover's. Muggins, I'm going up to your best dress out in that howling mob. Oh, you should see him get me through that howling mob. Monsieur Warren, je vois le vous voir. Il y a longtemps que je n'ai pas vu. Comment allez-vous? Uh, friends. <coughs> this is my sister, Miss Warren, Miss Runnymede and Mr. Bates. Any friend of Mr. Warren is a, a friend, friend of the Ross. Uh, Larry, we'll be back in a moment. Yeah. Uh, je vais vous chercher une table. La plus fun. La plus bon de ma tante est très bon. I know that one. <laughs> Now, Larry. I'd be very nice to this little Juliet girl. Well, of course, why not? After all, the runny meads, you know, they don't grow trees, and you're Aunt Barbara. Look, Henry, for 364 days out of the year, you can be Aunt Barbara's watchdog trying to run my life. But tonight, why don't you relax and have a little fun? Be a Swiss guide and go yodeling through the gap. <laughs> yodeling? <laughs> Fancy yodeling at my time of life. Yeah, <laughs> You will all start off with our famous Duras oysters, of course. Oh, not for me, thank you. I don't care for oysters. <laughs> oh, you haven't tasted a Duras oyster. Well, no, I don't think I shall. I think I'd rather have some, uh, some uh, turtle soup. You won't like it. My dear sir, please, don't argue with me. I am a lawyer. And I'm a chef. And I can recommend you the oysters. But I hate oysters. But they don't taste like oysters. Well, I don't want oysters that don't taste like oysters. I want turtle soup that does not taste like turtle... Larry, 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 I'll put your oysters on the fire. Turtle soup. Still no sign of him. Oh, are you sure, Muggins? You know what they're like out there. I'm only telling you what Freddie told me. He's been on duty since four o'clock, and he never slips up. Oh, we'll have those sent over to the hospital. With a gracious to pleasure. You were right, Muggins, as usual. Down with three. I got two. Next hand, we'll play without cheating. Did you put that there? Barney, remember that rain check? But I do. Well, it's raining. Stood up? Mm -hmm. First time, and I don't like it. How about some coffee and donuts? Coffee and donuts? Egghead, bring along that breakaway suit of yours. We're going places with Sonny Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> Full house. Oh, let's go someplace else. Oh, no, sis. This is the best food in the country. Well, all right, well, I am famished. What is it, Larry? A horse. Why, Elizabeth, it looks like the horse that Sonny rode in the circus, doesn't it? No. <laughs> This is the mama of Seabiscuit. <laughs> Uh, 
Oysters de Roche, of course. Of course. I'm awfully sorry that I had to be so firm with that oyster peddler, but I was determined to get what I wanted here. The turtle soup, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't believe you like the Roche. I do like it. I do, in his place. But I think it's the place of every good restaurant to realize that the customer is always right. Even when he's wrong, he's right. Ah! <laughs> Wait! <laughs> Wait! <laughs> What do you want? A little bit of everything. I'll give us a drink. What's the matter? Have you seen a ghost? think of me for breaking my date, but I have a very good reason. Yes, I saw her. Yes, you saw her. Well, now, if you don't mind, I'll get back to my friend. Ah, uh, but I do mind. Sonny Sullivan, you're going to have supper with me. Oh, am I? Mm-hmm. It's in the stars. No, that's not fair. You know very well an Irish girl would want to cross even one star. Oh, come on, let me show you how to get a ten-course dinner in New Orleans without ever leaving the sidewalk, all right? Oh, not a bit hungry. Fresh fried shrimp! Here comes the first course. Oh. Have you tasted the Louisiana shrimp? No. Smell. Sonic. Got it. I know just the place to get the next course. Entertain. Automobile magnets, me? I'm just a hard-working engineer. Well, how about Warren Motors? Oh, that's my aunt Barbara. Oh, it's all in the family. Yeah. You know, the Warren family's been in the automobile business for over 35 years. Oh, Upstart. What? You know, the Sullivans have been in show business for over 300 years. Oh, hello. My sister could have only heard you say that. <laughs> Evening, children. We got legs, wings, breasts. Ham and hose. Uh, I'll take wings. Same for you, sir? No, Mammy, I'll take a half. I'm not the type for wings. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Fair Juliet. 
You know, Egghead, lots of men have told me that they're in love with me. Really? Uh-huh. You don't think my money has anything to do with it? Oh, no. <laughs> what kind of money have you? Oh, about two million. About two million dollars? Two million dollars and you run around like that with holes in your clothes? And... Where's Sonny? I wouldn't know, my good man. Egghead. Oh, uh, uh, Professor uh, Bonnie Billings, Miss Juliet running me. How do you do? Uh, <laughs> what could have happened to her? Oh, sis is all right. I wouldn't worry about her. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Let your star fall down for shocking the town is all that you do. That's a good memory. Smiling all the while, come boy. Where'd you get that smile from, boy? Little sunny girl, be my honey girl. I'm for you. Da -da 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 -da. I'm for you. Give me that. <laughs> now let's go search for some dessert. We should have brought egg, kid. His back pocket's always filled with coffee ice cream. <laughs> I was planning on grapes with egg. I've got a better idea. This time you follow me. Right. But why do they call it Mardi Gras? Well, because it's Fat Tuesday. Fat Tuesday? Yeah. Last day you can eat all you want. Oh, oysters, Rockefeller, Coubillon, Gumbo, Crepe Suzette. We'd want to eat a Crepe Suzette if they could get an apple taffy. A taffy apple? Uh-uh. Apple taffy. Everyone knows that. Look, I come from a long line of taffy apple eaters. The Warrens were noted for it. So don't try to tell me about a taffy apple. You don't even know how to eat one. No? Uh-uh. No true apple taffy eater would ever begin by biting into the side of the apple. Why not? That's the spirit of adventure. Now, an Irishman always starts by biting in the top of the apple tap. All right. Apple tap, it, apple tap, you win. But only because I don't want to spend the last hour of my to go arguing about a taffy apple. Apple tap. Only one more hour. Mm-hmm. At 12, the bells of St. Louis ring out the Mardi Gras. I wonder if Cinderella hated clocks. What? Midnight, the end. Dreams that live on the rays of the moon and die as soon as they set eyes on the sun. Hey, that's good. <laughs> well, it ought to be. <laughs> A little bit of Metaling's bluebird. Sonny, you remember the first time you were thrown into my arms? Just about a hundred years ago? Mm -hmm. That couldn't have been just an accident, could it? Doesn't that ten course dinner of yours on the sidewalk and two coffee? Oh, all right. Where are we going? French market? Come on, you'll see. No one. 
one but you. farewell performance at your age. I can't believe it. Well, you expected me to get married sometime, didn't you, Morgan? No, I didn't expect you to be picked up and kissed by a strange man and come home engaged all in the same night. Oh, what a night, huh? Louisiana shrimp, fried chicken, apple taffy, and the Mississippi. That's not love, that's indigestion. You're on, Miss Sullivan. Here it is. <laughs> Is he going to marry? The one with the pipe. Two jolly blue boys, two tried and true boys. They call me Sam Garb. I'm Jack Garb. Ha ha. Talk about women, they fall for a garb. Can stick to your job, kneel down and swab. Say, really, go blimey. That's nerve from a limey. Eh, uh, beat me, sailor. Race to the bar. We do the on pipe when Neptune gets rough. No boogie woogie. Uh, the on pipe's all stuff. <laughs> when she meets Aunt Baba. <laughs> and the flower bed must have been slept in. Sorry, ma'am. May I? No! Leave it alone. Aunt Papa! I'm so glad you're back. Well, I'm not. I should have stayed in Bermuda and married the Maharaja. Aunt Papa! Well, he must have been in love with me, because the day I left, he got himself engaged to eight lovely girls on the rebound. I told her to be careful of that one. I'm sorry, madam. I was a little startled. You better get him off right away, Johnson. Uh, yes, madam. Oh. 
All your lovely perfume. Perfume? That Scottish queen under the blister at the bottoms of your feet. Ah, oh, Barbara. Now, run along, Lizzie, and get me a bottle of beer to take with my bicarbonate. Yes. Oh. Oh, hello, Henry. What's the matter with you? Rushing me back here just because Larry got himself engaged to Juliet Runnymede. Juliet Runnymede? Won't you sit down? No. Uh, may I... Uh... No! Those are my dual pistols. Pistols? Presents from the Maharaja. I taught him to rumba, and he taught me to shoot. To shoot? Shoot. Miss Barber, about Runnymede. Well, what about him? Juliet is a debutante who came out a little too late, but she has two million dollars. Cowboy taught me to do that. <laughs> It may be loaded. Yes, of course it's loaded. As a matter of fact, Miss Barber, I'm not going to marry Miss Runnymede. Well, I'm rather pleased he isn't going to marry Juliet. There are just as many girls with just as much money who aren't half-witted. Yes, but this girl is no one you know. You know? Who is it? Well, she... She... If you don't mind, I'll tell you over there. This girl... It, what am I aiming at now, Henry? Now? Oh, it's that beautiful inlaid clock. Larry is going to marry. That is... La you stop that double talk, Henry. It certainly doesn't look like a clock to me. No. Oh, yes, there's a clock. He met this girl in a circus. No, that's nothing. I met the Maharaja on a Ferris wheel. But this girl is of the circus. She rides in the circus on a white horse. She dives into a tank. How quaint. She what? She is a circus. Horseback actress. <laughs> My, what a good shot. The Sultan's horse. Henry, I was not aiming at the horse. you a lot, Patty, old boy. You know, we don't say goodbye in show business, so I'm just going to slip out when nobody's looking. It'll be a lot easier that way, and you'll understand, won't you, Patty? Quiet, everybody. Be not sure. The governor's got something to say. Go. Major. It is needless for me to say that your absence will be keenly felt, not only by myself, but by your co-worker. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is we'll miss you. And with your leaving, we all feel like folding up. But instead, we're going right on doing as good a show as we can. And don't ever think that any of us here will ever forget you. As a little tribute, we've Hey, where is it? Hey, hey, where, where's the property man? Where's that box from? Where's that half the sun? Where are those what things? Happened? She's got to wear them. Oh, there they are. <laughs> this is from all of us, from the roustabouts on up. It's, uh, well, we thought of uh, getting you an ice box, but we figure the Warrens have plenty of electric ice boxes. <laughs> <laughs> a little something for you to wear when you meet your ritzy relatives. Uh, don't open it until you get there. Sit back and relax. Larry, is that it? 
Yes, that's it. Waverly Hall. That's where you're going to live. Oh, it's kind of scary, isn't it? Why, Sonny, I didn't think anything could scare you. No? <laughs> well, I have danced in the lion's cage, but I always had the trainer right there. Where do you think I'm going to be? and won't be back till late. Your aunt gave orders that she's not to be disturbed until the reception. And Mr. Bates went for a long walk. I believe he said, through the swamps. Uh, Johnson, this is my fiancée, Miss Sullivan. Oh, hello, Johnson. How do you do, Miss? Excuse me, sir. Well, Johnson approves. Well, that's the first hurdle. It's the factory. Do you mind me for just one minute, business? Oh, I should say not, darling. This is no time to be losing your job. <laughs> At seven o'clock, there will be a light meal served in your room. Oh, yes, sir. At eight o'clock, Miss Barbara Warren will receive you down here in the hall. And if I may say so, miss, that means eight o'clock precisely. What a funny way to receive people, sitting way out there in the middle of nowhere. She's been receiving like that ever since she saw Queen Victoria do it in Buckingham Palace. Hello, baby. Oh, there you are. Yes, here I am. Well, what the... How are you? Oh, all right. Now, where is she? She has two minutes yet. She won't be late. She'll probably make up for lost time by riding down the stairs on a white horse. Good heavens, she looks as though she just won the Kentucky Derby. Darling, this is Aunt Barbara. Hello. And Elizabeth, you know. I suppose this is what you'd call making a grand entrance. In other words, darling, in behalf of the Warrens, welcome to Waverly Hall. I haven't seen that many orchids since those gangster funerals in Chicago. Yes, they're lovely, aren't they? Everybody in the show chipped in. They were a farewell gift. Sentimental sort of thing, aren't you? Well, it does kind of bring them along with me, you know. Muggins and Barney and Egghead. And I suppose that is the tattooed lady. <laughs> Let us go into the drawing room. Oh, now I know why you call her the old dragon. Don't worry, darling. Aunt Barbara's bar is worse than her bite. Oh, well, that's some consolation. Johnson, get me a drink. Yes. An old-fashioned with a dash of absinthe. Yes. Muggins. Egghead. Bunny. Oh. Do you remember the riverboat? It's going to be a little awkward getting close to you, isn't it? Oh, all right. Don't you dare tell Muggins. I promise. Oh, Fitz. Put this up in Miss Sullivan's room. Yes. Take great care of them. Yes. Watch out for distress signals. Sure, no. Never take me eyes off you. Poor little Muggins and the tattooed lady had a short life. 
sit down. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to be her sister-in-law? Well, thank goodness that'll never happen to you, Miss Julie. Sullivan, Sullivan, what branch of the Sullivan? Oh, my grandfather came from Inniskillen. Oh, the hunting Sullivan. No, the flying Sullivan. The flying Sullivan? Yes, darling, the flying Sullivan. My grandmother was the greatest in Europe. It isn't everyone who can boast of a family tree in which her own grandmother actually swung. Well, what are we going to do now? Are you going to stay here all night listening to that chamber music? I didn't think we'd need any other entertainment with so much home talent. You'll sing for us, of course, Sonny. I will. Don't tell me you sing, too. Oh, I've really not got very much of a voice. Oh, go ahead. I hate people who have to be close. Come on, sing. Larry, will you play for me? You bet I will. You can sit down now and sing. You know what I like to do? Get right in the middle of that floor and shout. <clears throat> yes, darling. Yes. Yes. Oh, Henry, don't you just love music? Especially the three Bs. Three Bs? Oh, oh yes, of course. Bach, Beethoven. And Boogie Woogie. What's she going to sing? Nothing you're apt to know, darling. What are you going to sing? Comes your boogie woogie now. Leave me for then, dear, in your charm, which I gave on so fondly today. For to vanish tomorrow and fleet from my own, my fairy gift fading away. Why did you tell her that was my favorite song? I, Miss Barbara, I never said a word. I thought not. And I cheat some profane by a tear. My grandmother learned that song from Tom Moore himself. She's a calculating little wench. To which time will but made more dear. Oh, a heart that has truly loved me. Buy her off, Henry. Buy her off? Buy her off. We can sing a little song, too. Orchestrated with a checkbook. And I know just the tune to sing. That was something they didn't expect. It was too good for them. Much? Barry, your Aunt Barbara wishes to speak to you. I'll what? take care of Miss Sullivan. Well, see that you take good care of her. She's very valuable. Well, possibly Miss Sullivan would be interested in Larry's collection of birds. His stuffed variety. He's been collecting them ever since he was a very small boy. They're in our library. Well, darling, what is it? What is it? Take me away from this bleak party. I'm going to bed. Sit down, please. Sit down right there. Miss Sullivan, as you know, I am the Warren family lawyer, and more or less Larry's guardian, uh, more or less. Oh, yes, you've made that quite clear. Thank you. Has it ever occurred to you how nice it would be to have means of your own? That is to say, to be absolutely independent. Well, no, I've never really thought about it. That's Larry's concern, surely. Well, after all, when two people are very much in love, you know, they just don't discuss those things. Come, come, come. You don't mean to tell me you're really in love with Larry. Yes. Strange, isn't it? <clears throat> it's different. I'll have to appeal to you. Hey, uh, you see, you're not the only one who loves him. His family loves him and want him to be happy. They're uh, <clears throat> jealous. Jealous of those who can contribute to his happiness more than they. Very nicely put. Exactly what I was going to say myself. How'd you know? 
Camille, third act. Is it? Oh, bless my soul, so it is. <laughs> Tell me, how is it possible that you, who've been bobbing around on horses and diving into tanks and a circus girl all your life would know anything of Camille? My aunt, Kate Sullivan, rocked me to sleep rehearsing Camille. Kate Sullivan? Oh, not the Kate Sullivan. The Kate Sullivan. Oh, no, not the great Kate Sullivan. The great Kate Sullivan. Your aunt? Was my aunt. Not really. Not really. Why, Miss Sullivan, she was a great actress. She was one of the greatest actresses that ever lived. Would you believe it that I saw her in Camille in the old Lyceum Theatre in London 21 nights in a row? And the last night of all, I sent her a bunch of great big viol... Uh, what were they? Uh, peonies. I'm sure Aunt Katie was very touched. I never forget her in the last scene where she said, I'm not going to live very long, Armand. I shall not live till spring, Armand. Yes, that was it. That was it, yes. And then he said so tenderly, don't be afraid, Camille. Courage, Camille, courage. Oh, of course, that was the famous line, wasn't it? Yes. I was needing some of it myself. Do you remember the final scene? She's tiny, and she handed him the little mirror. The silver mirror? The picture. Picture? Picture? Yes, yes, it was. It was a picture. And she said, if anyone asks you, say, um, with someone who loved you well. Kate Sullivan herself. Oh, you're marvelous. Aunt Barbara will be delighted when she hears you've reached the factory, Miss. Uh... Courage, Henry. Courage. She's... Poor Henry. I'm beginning to realize why Larry fell in love with you. May I give you a little advice? I just got away from Aunt Barbara. Good night, Harry. Why, what's the matter? Oh, you promised not to let Elizabeth get you down. Oh, Larry, please, in the morning. Sniveling about. Sorry, I didn't know you were there. Sit down. I frightened you, didn't I, Charter? I frighten everybody. Do you know, Sonny? You're the first real human being that's been in this family since Jean the pirate. He was on my side of the family, of course. Want me to roll you up? Oh, no, thank you. Call me Aunt Baba. Go ahead. Try it. Yes, From the moment you told me why you wanted to wear those orchids, I knew you had stuff. Why did you send Mr. Bates into? I sent Henry so you could make a fool of him. From what I hear, you did better than I expect. Oh, I only hope Larry is good enough for you. Well, that isn't what I was thinking a few minutes ago. I know. Planning the courageous exit. 
Tommy Ruff. Why exit courageously? Why exit at all? It might help. Now, I want you to promise me that you won't do anything noble and ridiculous before you see Larry. Go on. Promise. I promise. And now, either stamp it out or let it blaze. Oh, I'm a fine one to be giving advice. Blind leading the blind. That's what they call me. I'm the black sheep of the family. Well, I better get in now. Night is giving me the sniffles. Good night, Aunt Baba. But if you ever tell anybody about me being an old softie, you ought to see me with the Maharaja's dueling pistols. <laughs> Gee, darling, you've got me worried. What's the matter? Oh, Larry. Well, what's that for? Oh, oh Baba. She's so... So un unexpected, yes, I know. But she's all for you. I know, Larry, but oh, what about all those others? Oh, forget it. They're a tough audience. Honey, they'll be in the palm of your hand before the first act's over. Little Elizabeth? I'll take care of Lizzie. Look here, darling. I don't care if the whole bunch walk out as long as you walk in. Are you sure, Larry? Am I sure? Are you quite sure? Sonny, look at me. Do you love me? Do you mean it? Do you promise to love me always? Forever mm -hmm. and never mm -hmm. and not for always for our days. For oh, there are men who love now and then. on the new moon. I wish that... You mustn't tell me. I don't have to, do I? Splendor of Waverly Hall, Miss Sonny Sullivan, ex bareback rider, the charming bride to be, is a niece of Kate Sullivan. Kate Sullivan, as you know, the late great Kate Sullivan. And Fancy Spangle Swimmer. She numbered among her repertoire such marvelous plays as Camille, Ibsen's Wild Duck, Shaw's Pygmalion. Yeah, today became the bride of Lawrence Warren, millionaire auto manufacturer. After the brilliant ceremony, the young couple left for a honeymoon in Hawaii. <laughs> Of course, you can't really say that. They're not even married yet. <laughs> You'll find a list of the bridesmaids and all the other junk on my desk. Something old. That's me. Something new. That's you. Something borrowed. Here. That was once a brand new penny that I was to wear in my shoe on my wedding day. Oh, Aunt Barbara, you never Nothing told. Nothing to tell. 
He was a lieutenant. Handsomest boy you ever saw. I wasn't so bad myself then. Slim little thing like you. He heard somewhere that my family didn't think he was good enough for me. So he broke it off. You never saw him again? He died last year, a general. Confounded fool. If he hadn't been so stubborn and married me, he'd been commander-in-chief. Barbara, they don't know you very well, do they? No. I don't talk my fool head off to everyone. You punch that out for me, Russ, I can get to the track this afternoon. Yeah, I'll be here for a couple more highballs. Young man, if you were sent to cover a murder, you'd at least have the decency to remain until the crime was committed. My apology. All right. Well, I must go and get the rest of my war paint on. I don't suppose there'll be many more weddings for me in Waverly Hall. Oh, something blue. Oh, Bob. <laughs> Judge, your number's 91. Yes, sir. See who that was? Yeah, they're all here today, the whole blue book. Drop your passengers, park in the rear court, Judge. I wonder what her people are like. My dear, people like that haven't got any people. <laughs> Can you imagine Sunny's surprise when she sees us? Ah, uh, Governor, that's what I call a bold gesture. If I'd had to close the show for three weeks, I wouldn't have missed the wedding. Boys, don't forget the timing. As soon as the I do's are over, I make the announcement. Then Hector comes in with the big horseshoe. <laughs> no. That's what I said, Hector doesn't. We don't it. want Hector till the finale. Well, that will make him awfully angry, boss. We better leave him outside. Muggins, darling. Oh, Muggins, I'm so glad you could make it. Wild elephants couldn't keep me away. Oh, how's everyone? Oh, where are you playing? What's the new girl like? Oh, fair. Penny doesn't like her. You never could pull a horse. Oh, <laughs> Margie! <laughs> Let's have a look at you. Oh, you look like a million. How do you feel? Terrible. Only three lines to the part, but I couldn't be more nervous if I had to go on and play Ophelia. That's fine. Now I know you'll give a great performance. I've tied lots of these ascots, Larry, but never on such a memorable occasion. Imagine the niece of the great Kate Sullivan. I'd like to punch this guy. Now, careful. Don't you lose that temper of yours. I had those reporters absolutely eating out of my hand when I told them about Kate. Yes, I know, but some of this stuff's not funny. Why don't you leave us alone? Have you an invitation, sir? Uh, no, but I'd like to see Miss Elizabeth Warren for a moment. Would you step? Good morning, Johnson. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Johnson, how'd you do, sir? I'm sorry, but as you see, there's a wedding going on. Oh, I know. That's rather important. My name is Billing. A funny Billing. We can. You'll see that she's ready to leave her room by 11, won't you? Yes. There's a Mr. Billings to see you, miss. He appears to be an itinerant tradesman. Johnson, you know I can't see anyone now. Uh, quite so. Oh, Johnson, did he say his name was Bonnie Billings? I believe he did mention a Bonnie. I'll see him. Yes. I think Elizabeth is bearing up magnificently. Well, she realizes nothing can stop it now. Haven't you finished this thing yet? Calm down now, calm down. That's all you have to do. Just take your cue from me. There. Now, Larry, when I pull out the ring, why, you were... The ring. The ring. I had it. I had it right there in this pocket. I had it. Well, whose who's, who's wedding is this? What are you getting nervous about? Let's get your veil on, dear. They want you downstairs in just ten minutes. Oh, if you please. No, no. Fei-Fei showed me exactly how you want it put on. Will you give that to me? What would Fei-Fei know about dressing Sonny Sullivan? That's been my job ever since I made her first little ballet skirt. Oh, Mrs. DePeister. This is Mrs. Muggins. He used to help me in the show. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, would you mind? Mm -hmm. Certainly not, if you wish it. She wishes it. Just ten minutes. It's yes, all right. Well, she won't miss her cue. Do you know, Egghead, all my life I've wanted to be in a circus. Not really. You know, Winnie, you all wanted to be out of one. Oh, how quaint. <laughs> Killing you. <laughs> 
Listen, fellas. You're all in here on passes. No tricks. Don't worry, Governor. The monkeys and the elephants will be performing for us today. Major, I said no tricks. Johnson? Be nonchalant, boys. That means in French, quiet. I'm happy, too. Oh, darling. Not like you to cry. Cry? <laughs> Call that crying when you get a load of me at the wedding. Oh, my <laughs> Oh, run down, darling. I want to know how I look when I come down. in Washington. Yeah, so you did. Uh, had the pigeons then. Yeah, that's right. Air Corps, they were drafting. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they booked a wedding out of half-baked loudmouth animal act. Eh? Oh, Egghead, I just adore show talk. How about giving us a break? A few pictures on the society page would be a big help. Why not? How about it, fellas? Sure. Okay, yeah, right. Come on, Hector. Yeah. Get in this All thing right. here. You're trying to steal a show, huh? We need this where you join the circus. Hey. We'll smear that guy with a mahatcha. We'll smear him with a mahatcha? The mahatcha, it's a dance. Oh, but I can't dance. Don't have to dance. You just come along for the ride. Get out of the way, Major. Here we come. Jive, gypsies, jive. Elizabeth, the ring. Have you got the ring? Of course not. You have it. No, no, I have it. I have it in this pocket all the time, but now it's... It... Oh, yes, look. It must have been in this pocket all the time. <laughs> oh, dear. Stopped. 
Why don't you do something? Well, what can I do? Nobody listens to me nowadays. Oh, that's wonderful. What a mahasha. Oh. oh, we don't have to wait for this wedding. Why don't we go and have one of our own? Sweetie! Are we going to take second billing to a couple of hoofings? I should say not. Play gypsies, jet. Exactly. Seals. Acrobats. It's a lie. Come on, Jim. Roust about. What's the matter with you? Are you drunk? I'm trying to find out. Well, will you stop it? Never did I think I'd see the day when a seal would be waltzing around in Waverly Hall. Yes, now I know you're drunk. Oh, I wish I were. I tell you, you've got to do something. About what? About the seal, about the acrobats, about Juliet running me, doing the Mahootka with fried egg roust about. What are you talking about? Downstairs, in your drawing room. Sonny, come downstairs right away, dear. The bunch. They're ad living all over the parlor. The punch? It was supposed to have been a surprise for you, but it's gone all fluey. Oh, Muggins, but I can't. It's Larry's season before the wedding. It's bad luck. It'll be worse luck if you don't come down, darling. All right. Mr. Warren, how about one with you and the seal? I'm sorry, Mr. Warren. I, I guess we kind of broke things up. Get out. All right. Shut going, up. Get out or I'll throw you out. Hey, Rube. Lay off. Mr. Warren, do you know what hey, Rube means? In exactly two minutes, where Waverly Hall once stood. But don't worry. We're going quietly. But only on account of Sonny. Look, mister, take your train seal and your monkeys and get going. Larry. Don't interrupt me. But, Larry, these are my... Get you out of this sort of thing. You don't have to marry me to get me out of anything. Now, Sonny, keep out of this. It's bad enough without you making a scene. Me making a scene? Isn't that what's been expected of me ever since I came here? Wasn't I supposed to come riding in on a white horse or sliding down a tightrope? Take it easy, Sonny. It'll be all right as soon as I get the gang out. Oh, wait a minute, Bunny. My friends are staying. Your friends are going. All right. I'm going, too. <laughs> Trade one of them for a whole bunch of snobs you call your friends. We've been thrown out before, run out of tank towns and two cent carnivals, but we always stuck together, and that's the way it is now. Then we'd better call it off until you come to your senses. Don't worry, I've come to my senses just in time. I'm glad this happened when it did. If that's the way you feel. Funny. Hold your horses, Sonny. We've got to straighten this out. Oh, come on, let's leave him on a laugh. Get some water, Muggins. No, no, I don't want the water. Russ, kill that wedding copy I gave you. My well, impressive ceremony just turned into a brawl with seals, acrobats, elephants. No, I haven't been drinking, and the bride and groom are having a knockdown drag out in the middle of it. Honey, why did you bring them in before the wedding? Oh, that Warren dame, uh, Lizzie, insisted. Come on, I'm all right. You may need this. Thank you. I'm quite sure you need this. <laughs> wow! The charming Brad just kicked her sister-in-law right in the middle of the lobby. Aunt oh, Father, she kicked me. Who did? Sonny. Sonny? Oh, wow, that's what I always wanted to do myself. What's going on here? It's all off, Aunt Barbara. What is? Oh, everything. Operator, operator. Too late, but you gotta kill it. Hang up down there. I want the police, this is important. Hang up yourself. Listen, Russ, I'm not kidding. She kicked his sister in the lobby and the wedding's all off. The wedding is off. Oh, get me the police. Get me the fire department. Get me an aspirin. Would you care to make a statement for the press, Miss Warren? Young man, for once in my life, I have nothing to say. Don't, Muggins, it's all right. Oh, but it does 
We broke it up and I can't bear it. But it doesn't matter, Muggins. I guess I'm not much good at drawing room fast. This is where I belong. You'd belong anywhere, Sonny. <laughs> Something borrowed. just as I've never been away. How's the house? It's breaking my heart, turning them away by the hundreds. No. Every seat gone, could have sold out three times over. Connie, that's wonderful. Hello, Ten Mark. minutes. There she goes. I'll be waiting for you. Right. Come on, Muggins. I hear they couldn't even give the mayor any seats. Oh, it's a good thing somebody's still interested. Sonny Sullivan, if you're still thinking about this. I'm not. Say you're not. How you could think you could get along without all this. <laughs> I must have been crazy. I'll say you were. Doors open. Once more, then we'll break it up. I should say so, rehearsing for three weeks and every day it gets worse. Two little bluebirds love two other bluebirds, but those two are true birds as both. I am a sweetheart, this lonely head. He takes me oh, egghead. You're just dragging along. This is supposed to be a song of happiness. Two little bluebirds. A smile under your feet. And watch me. <laughs> now you do it. Oh, that's not a smile, that's a leer. And sissy. Five minutes, Sonny. I'm ready. There's a riot at the box office. They want tickets I haven't got. Had to call out the police. Oh, that's swell. Well, Gibbons, if I can draw a crowd like this by doing a few stunts, I might get them to come and see me in a legitimate show. Of course you could. Means a lot of hard work, though. Oh, that's the idea. Oh, you know, Aunt Kate always used to say every actress needed a kick in the pants before she amount to anything. You gave Lizzie enough of a jolt to make her a Sarah Bernhardt. Quick change to your sunshine costume? Oh, sure. Why? What's the idea? I'll tell you what I want to do. I'm going to hold a parade for the finale. Start with my new number, then sunshine. I don't want them to see you until then. It'll be a sock opening for you. Oh, buddy, you're a darling. Thanks. Come on, Patty, you can relax. We got to step in it. We've got to hurry, honey. We've only got about two minutes. Mm -hmm. Isn't it like Bunny giving me such a break on a night like this?
Hawkins. Are they standing them up yet out there? I can't see a thing with all those spotlights on Bunny. They're so quiet. <laughs> Of course I am. What's the matter, Bunny? Are they a tough crowd? You've never had a better audience in your life. Good luck, Sonny. Oh, thanks. Do it. He must have bought out the whole house. You've got to give a performance. The show oh, must... Oh, I know. The show must go on. Well, this is one time the show does not go on. Think of all those other celebrants. Not one of them would ever have walked out on a performance. Not one of them ever played to an empty house. When I say empty, I mean empty. Go and tell him that. Muggins, you knew about this. Me? Oh, Sonny. Well, I'm sorry, but if he buys every house I play, I'll still do the same. Well, I think you ought to go back. Well, I'm not going back, Muggins. I'm going straight ahead. I've made up my mind. Stock in Connecticut. Broadway. Perhaps even Shakespeare. Sounds awfully dull to me. Muggins, we're moving. Hit it. My saw, let it go. Captain, let it blow.
like to join my show, offering half interest in Warren's streamlined showboat. Huh? Titan going up, Miss Sullivan. Hey, Sonny, take a look at the shore. I've got them lined up and hitting natchez. Find the confounded brakes. And I thought the Maharaja taught me everything. Oh, Sonny. Do you love me? Oh, Larry, in front of all these people. All right, boys, throw me back. Oh, Larry, no, darling. Oh, oh you love me. And you mean it. I do for you. Stole my heart away. Little sunny girl, you're my honey girl. I'm for you. Hey, I know you're sunny. I can't stop the boat, but it says here I can marry you. Ha, 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 ha.